Woody okay? He wasn't kicking out there today. Oh, uh, yeah, he's fine. Just with our three-day practices. Um, we have one go the first day, one go the third day, and they both go the second day. So we did it that way with today being the least reps day. Going to be somewhat of an issue to figure out how to get the quarterback's reps, obviously, without Purdy today. Was it a little easier? How, how did you, in your mind, kind of break that down with three? Uh, we just rotated the ones each period. So they just switched off each period who went with them, and the next guy took the twos. Now, when, when Purdy is like a full go and is practicing all the time, do you still envision having four quarterbacks here? Yep. You've never done that. I don't believe you've ever done that before. Uh, I know you touched on this a little bit yesterday, but why the, is it just because Brandon, Brandon Allen you think is talented enough to stay in? Yeah, well, I mean, we wanted three in OTAs. Um, we had two for the first part, so we want to add it to three, and uh, we really liked him so far. So, um, you know, we don't, don't want to just get rid of guys we like. Usually first practice, guys are knocking a little rust off. How did it feel out there? Did it feel like... There was still a lot of that or a little bit better than before? Uh, I thought it was, I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was a good first day. You know, we go real light today with the reps and um, just how long we're out there. So it's it's a pretty easy practice. My big, my biggest thing is guys just not being too eager because everyone's so gun ho and you don't have the pads on yet. So just trying our tails off to keep everyone off the ground. And um, I think we did that pretty good for the most part. With that uh, defensive end starting position opposite Bosa, is it a, a competition between Drake and Leland Farrell and coming out of spring? How did, how did both of those guys look? Uh, they look good, but you know the way these springs have been the last couple of years, we don't really do much with the O-line and D-line, so I don't really stack them that way. I mean, I go into if they're new guys who haven't been at that spot um, recently, you know, that's in the last few years, I go into training camp with a very open mind. Um, so they all did a good job improving and stuff and getting in shape and OTAs. and. Now we'll see where they're at out here over the next few days, and um, nothing really counts till we get the pads on and start doing a little more football. How, how efficiently does Trey seem, or comfortable does he seem running the offense? Great. I mean, it's third year calling the plays, third year getting in and out of the huddle, so it's um, for for all of them. It's always easier, but he's doing awesome at it. With Christian, you just protect, keep him out of team. Is that just it? Dialing back a little bit. Uh, yeah, we have a few plans with some guys. Um, uh, I know we don't want him to go three days in a row here to start, so that was the decision today. The DBs and the wide receivers, you know, they post a little on social media and they, they get after it after plays a little bit. Do you enjoy that, you know, the little competition they have? Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, that's usually what people do in sports, and it makes it a little bit more fun, and those guys are tight and competitive, and I just, as long as they're doing their jobs out there, I, I would do the same thing, just as long as it doesn't take away from them getting better at stuff. Who Fong got a pretty good play to break up the pass to Danny. That's what are you seeing out of him as he enters year three? That was a hell of a play because I thought Danny beat the corner on it. I'm curious to see the film, how he got over there so fast because I was told that we looked him off pretty good, but he got there fast. So that was an impressive play and I'm curious to see how it all unfolded. Danny Gray is a guy that you, I think, want to see more of in his rookie year. Just I know it's the first day of camp, but does it look like he's put in some work during the offseason? I can tell he's in shape. You know, but I, you know, I can't decide. I mean, that's what you can tell on one day is whether in shape or not. But um, we'll see how he handles this whole camp. Um, he had, thought he had a pretty good OTAs, took a step forward, and um, came back in good shape. And we'll see as he gets more reps and more opportunities and stuff um, how much better he's gotten. Yeah, what's your pro- Kinlaw look like he's dropped even more weight. Is that what you wanted to see from him? Yeah, Kinlaw's been unbelievable. Just in fact that I mean, you guys see how he looks, and he's just. He's gone a full year with no setbacks. And so to get through OTAs with that, and then our 40 days away, it continued. Um, and as that happens, he just keeps looking better and better. And um, I mean, everyone knows the specimen that he is. So now it's hopefully that can continue through the training camp so we can really tie that to football. And um, if he can do that and stay healthy with the way he's worked and the way his talent is and his mindset, I feel it's a matter of time for him. Do you almost want to give extra reps too, just because he hasn't been on the field very much in his years? I mean, Theoretically, yeah, just because, I mean, if that guy just keeps playing football, he's going to get really good. But, um, you know, we don't we don't go extra because the more you go extra with someone, the higher chance of him getting hurt. And that has been what's held him back. So um, we're trying to be as smart with him as possible. But for the first time in a couple of years, he's been healthy enough to get himself in a position to where he can be treated. Um, you know, like everyone else, just getting normal reps and everything. And if he is able to do that, uh, I think things will work out very well for him. 
what's your post uh, practice routine? Do you like to watch all the individual drills? Do you have time for that, or do you lean on your coaches to watch them? Yeah, I, right now, the coaches are waiting for me, so I sprint straight to here while talking to Corey on the way to give me a heads up on any weird things you guys might ask me, because um, my mind definitely isn't in, into it. So I have that. I talk to you guys. I'll sprint back. They'll all be in there waiting for me, so they'll be done with their lunch. I'll try to eat it while I run the meeting with the offense, which means I'll only get half of it in. Then when that's done, I go right to the quarterback meetings. And when that's done, um, we go out to walkthrough. When that's done, we come in and walk, watch walkthrough, then eat dinner. And then I think about watching the individuals and stuff, which sometimes I get to, sometimes I don't. That same feeling you have for Ken Law, do you have it for Drake Jackson and how he's come back in the camp? Um, exact same. Um, Drake wasn't as much of the injury stuff that Ken Law had, but Drake, um, just as you guys know from the end of last year, just his rookie year and stuff, um, had to get in much better shape and stuff to make it through the whole year. And he stayed here um, right when the season ended. That's why he had a great OTAs. Um, a lot of guys put in so much work. And then the 40 days away, they're like, all right, let me go take a break before um, we come back. And he didn't. He stayed here the 40 days away, um, kept doing everything he had done since February. And um, he's still continuing to climb. So we're excited about him. Coach, Brandon and I, you got a hell of a catch there. I believe it was on that third down. Um, what have you seen from him as far as his just development and improvement coming in, uh, to this year? Um, just how much more he matures just as a, as a player each year. I mean, every year he's gotten better. Um, Brandon came in with a lot of talent. Um, you know, he only had two years in college just coming off from JC and stuff. So he was a little raw in a couple things, especially going through that COVID year with um, where we really just met him on day one training camp and then he got hurt. Um, so he's always been trying to catch back and each year he's done so much better. And uh, last year I thought was the best year that he's had. And I um, usually know how they react to that based off the off season. And um, he's been obsessed with this off season with football. You can tell he enjoys talking about it. He enjoys preparing for it. And um, he's truly become a pro. And um, Three results, I think, we will keep showing. Al, what, 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 what do you expect to see from your quarterbacks on day one, and what did you see from them? I just I don't expect a lot. I expect them to show us that they haven't gotten worse while they were gone, um, which, you know, they all get pretty good in OTAs, and what we're expecting and what we do today is really exactly what they did on OTA 1. Um, so I expect them to come out and be clean on all their footwork, clean with where to go with the ball, and just show that they've been working their 40 days away. And all our guys had, they had a good first day, but – Reps weren't high, and it was pretty basic stuff. And just keep it taking it one day at a time. And uh, second year receivers like Bourne and Jennings take big jumps, but they were on less crowded rosters from a pass catching standpoint, probably than Danny. So, have you talked to him about what does production look like for him? What does impact look like? Oh, uh, yeah, just finding a role for yourself. I mean, the roles, I, I know what we ideally would like him to do. Anytime you're the fastest guy on the team and stuff, you um, are a guy who can um, make defenses defend all three levels. And if you can isolate on those routes very well and run those consistently, and when they don't honor it, we throw at you and you catch it, um, that's a hell of a role. And if he can own that, um, he's got the advantage with that because of his 40 time. Um, so that's a big one for him. But we also have other guys who can run too. Um, you also don't just put guys out there to do only one thing. Um, so you just got to develop in everything. But that's kind of what he was born to do. Um, but he's got skill sets to where he can be out there in everything. But he's got to get more consistent so eventually he can dominate the role that he's the most talented at. Do you get butterflies driving in the facility? You got a new season coming upon you. You know you have a chance. You guys have been so close the last couple of years. Like, what's your mood and feeling as you get ready for this new season? Um, I mean, I'm so used to getting ready for seasons that usually when I'm coming in times like this, I've really gotten away for 40 days. That's why we come back a little bit early so we can kind of, as coaches, get the cobwebs out and stuff. And I do on my 40 days away what I don't want the players to do. Um, so coming back in here. Um, it's more just getting into it, like getting back into the coaches, going to talk to everybody, getting everyone sharp again. Um, I get excited for the season, usually in March and April. Like as you start to think, of, you look at your roster and you try to think of what holes you need to add in free agency, and then you think of what holes you got to add in the, the draft. Um, that's when you start getting excited when you see, all right, there's, man, we do have a good team. There's these possibilities. How can we fix this? And um, that's what pumps me the whole time. And then you get to work with them in OTAs and. Then I try to black out for 40 days because I know what's ahead of us for seven months. And we're getting into that, and we'll get, I'll get in better shape and get better at talking as I go and coaching. And um, I know our whole team will do that too. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.